Okay, so this is a boff. I'm not going to talk the entire time. Um, the primary goal out of this boff, at least for me, and maybe you have different goals, is to come up with a set of things that I need to change in the BTS, to come up with a set of things that maintainers with large amounts of bugs can do, both technically and socially, and hopefully to get a couple of you interested in things that you can help me change in the BTS. Because I'm just a single person, um, and there's no way that I can possibly implement all the things that need to be done there. Um, and I'm getting even more busy now than I was before. So without any further ado, let's talk about the problems, um, just so we all understand what we're dealing with here. The first thing is we have too many bugs. Um, some maintainers don't have a lot of bugs, but quite a few of us in this room have a lot of packages which are very popular with users and end up generating a lot of bugs. This ends up causing a problem because there's no way for a single maintainer or even a small group of maintainers to keep up with the influx of bugs uh, and to actually do any development. Uh, I mean, after all, we're all in Debian because we like to do development and like to work on interesting problems. And wrangling bugs is not a particularly interesting problem for most of us. Uh, I mean, it, I know it's not a very interesting problem for me. So what happens is when maintainers can't keep up, the bugs don't get responded to. They don't get altered. Nobody knows what's actually the case of the bug. Then the reporter feels abandoned. They feel that Debian doesn't care about their bug. Then the reporters don't report any more bugs because if Debian hasn't dealt with the single bug that they've sent, well, Maybe Debian doesn't care about bugs at all. And then consequently, the quality of Debian suffers because we're stopped getting the important bugs that actually matter. Do we need this thing on? <laughs> oh, you can't see me at all with it off? Yeah, it's, seeing me is not important. OK. Whatever. Um, the slides are available on my web page, so if you want to get them right now, you can go to rzlab.ucr.edu slash Debian slash DC9, um, and it's a single PDF that's there if you want to follow along. Okay, and so the quality of Debian suffers. So these are the sets of packages that currently have the most bugs. The first two, WMPP and installation reports, are kind of non-interesting cases. Um, it, I mean... Installation reports is probably an interesting case. Yeah. Uh, WMPP itself is not particularly interesting because those bugs are each owned by a small set of individuals who presumably know who they are, and there's a pretty good set of tools already existing um, that are written by a various number of people to wrangle those bugs and keep them in reasonably good shape and close the bugs that are outdated. Um, however, the rest of the packages that are on this list have a huge number of bugs. Um, and there's unlikely that single maintainers are going to be able to deal with this very effectively. This is just the set of bugs currently assigned to these packages, by the way. I haven't done anything special to figure out whether these are open bugs or closed bugs or tagged in any way. So these are just the current number of unarchived bugs assigned to a package. So example, I'm an offender here. Dev bugs I work on, and I have almost 400 bugs that are still assigned to dev bugs. Um, so that's slightly problematic. So we can see here that there's a lot of packages with bugs on the range from 200 to 1,000 bugs against a single package. Um, now, that's not really the main issue. Packages aren't the whole scope of the problem. Maintainers maintain more than one package. And so if you're a maintainer, you probably, some of you are maintaining multiple packages that were on that list. And so you now or are on teams that are maintaining multiple packages that are on that list. If you're a maintainer, you can be dealing with upwards of, well, a single person, let's say, uh, 900 bucks. That's a lot of bucks. I mean, you probably have no idea what more than maybe 80 or 90 of them actually are anymore. Um, so we need to come up with better ways of dealing with this. It's especially true in the case of teams. Um, teams, because there's no obvious single person responsible, there needs to be a better way to distribute that workload across the team. 
Um, and that's something that I think I want to talk about a little bit later. Um, just to give you an idea of an example here, uh, this is sort of, a, again, a slightly silly maintainer example, but packages.qa.debian.org has uh, 1,205 bugs. 710 of those bugs are without a response. Um, for example, this bug was submitted on 2001 and still hasn't been responded to. Uh, this is not to say that packages.debian or the QA team is at fault here. This is somebody else's issue. Yeah. Uh, so not yet. What you can do is you can easily see which bugs, um, you can sort them by last modified date, which will tell you which bugs uh, have been left alone for the longest time. But it can't tell you which ones haven't been responded to. Uh, I actually had to do this query using uh, UDD because it wasn't trivial to do in debugs but it is something that I need to fix so that you can pull out these bugs when you're a maintainer. What are the immediate, basically the question becomes, what are the immediate action items? And I think the immediate action items are bugs that haven't been responded to or bugs that have a message from the submitter which hasn't been responded to. I think those two things are things that are immediate action items for bugs to turn into that sort of parlance. Um, okay. Yeah, granted, these are QA packages, so it's, it's not really surprising that there are bugs like this. There's a reason why these uh, packages are maintained by QA, because they weren't properly being maintained before. A slightly more useful example, um, the QTKDE has 1,300-some-odd uh, bugs. 426 have no response. Uh, this bug, for example, was submitted uh, in 2003 and hasn't been responded to. It's just an example of a really old one. Um, so there clearly is a, a case for bugs that have sort of been ignored. Uh, granted, this is a wishlist bug, um, and it's not doesn't look like a terribly interesting wishlist bug, but there's still nothing's been done about it. Okay, this isn't a blame game. The maintainers have lots of packages. They do an immense amount of work for Debian, uh, but we need to come up with better ways to help them cope, um, and ways to help ourselves cope with this set of bugs. So the technical, there are a couple different technical solutions. And what I'd like to do is break the discussion into two groups. One half is technical things that we can do. The code that I can write, or you can write, or other people can write, uh, hopefully code that you can write, um, that will help solve these problems. The second aspect which I want to spend the second half of the BOF discussing, is social aspects. How can we get more people involved? How can we keep people involved? How can we make people want to modify the bugs? Anything that has to deal with the way people interact with bugs, that's not a real technical thing. Um, so one of the first things that actually was just mentioned um, is there needs to be a better way to identify bugs which require an action. Ideally, you would be able, as a maintainer, to look at dead bugs and see in a list from oldest to newest the set of bugs which required you to do an action. And when you had a moment's spare time, you would go to item number one and say, OK, yes, this is this, what this bug is. Kill it off. Um, and so that's something that dead bugs needs to change to do. Um, another thing that um, I'm going to talk about more in the State of the BTS talk is a tool called Local Debugs. And what this does is it produces a mirror of bugs that I think interest you. It's configurable so you can pick up more bugs if that, uh, more bugs are exciting for you. But these are basically a set of uh, bugs that are RC, bugs that you've talked to, bugs that you've submitted, and bugs in packages that you maintain. Um, and so this produces a fully working copy of the BTS with everything except for email handling on your local machine. Uh, and it has the stuff to rsync to update it. So you just run this command and it'll update it. Um, it runs a little web server, and so you can run a normal debugs on your machine. So when you're in an airplane, when you're on the train, when you are in one of those rare places that don't have uh, connectivity, you can 
at least queue up emails to deal with your bugs. Um, so I think that will help some people. Um, and the final thing is I need to fix the documentation for user categorization, which I've been saying that I was going to do for a while, but I really absolutely need to do it. Um, and it's petering to the top uh, so that it's possible for maintainers to come up with workflow solutions that work for them. Yeah, um, I, have, I have some blame for that as well since I uh, did, since I uh, went through the effort of learning how to use user categorization a little while back for uh, MandyB, I think it was. And uh, actually I found it I found it enormously useful to me once I got it going. I have a list of uh, of bugs that I plan to fix in various upstream releases and that sort of thing, which works quite well for me in that case. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the, I, I think I worked it out by looking through the debug source and figuring out what mails it was going to accept. So yeah, that's exactly how when I went to, to figure it out myself, the same problem, and uh, it it takes quite a bit of time investments, so that's one of the reasons why I haven't documented it. Um, so one of the things on my to-do list is to actually fix that. Um, or, yeah. Okay, um, uh, things that maintainers may find useful. Um, one of them is to automate replies for bugs that are likely to, to be long to upstream. So if you see, um, an example is the KDE team, which talked to me a couple times mentioned that they have a lot of bugs which aren't problems in the Debian packaging. And it's extremely difficult for them to um, handle sending the bug upstream to link up the forwarding and to keep tracking it because they have so many packages and so many different things. So one of the things that you can do as a maintainer, what I suggested to them, is to produce a set of documentation, like a single email, a couple paragraphs, that explains what the problem is, i.e. that there's upstream bugs, where the user can go to shepherd their bug upstream, how they can set up the linking, and um, basically make the user, or try to co-opt the user into being the shepherd of their own bugs. Um, so that was sort of my philosophy behind that. Um, and this basically puts more burden on the reporter, so that there are a lot of bug reporters and not so many maintainers, generally speaking. Um, and so that may help spread out the, the load. Yeah. Sam has a comment. Oh, yeah, your mic is coming. So, I mean, if you, this is, if you can get someone to do that, that's great. But I think one of the key things about Debian is that we are committed to being the user's interface. And that um, as a Debian user, one of the things I like is that I can report a bug, even if it's an upstream bug, and I don't have to go register for 40 different Bugzilla accounts on 15 different systems um, and argue with a bunch of upstreams. I have to argue using a consistent single interface uh, with Debian maintainers. And so I'd be very careful about, you know, how far we push that. Right. Yeah, that's, that is pretty much succinctly stated my reservations with it as well. Um, but it's one of those cases that when the choice is between having the bug totally ignored or at least telling the reporter um, some information that they could help, uh, I mean, while it's not an uh, optimal choice, I think it was the best of a bad uh, set. Yeah. I mean, the, the flip side of that is that um, I reported a bug uh, quite a while ago, and it sat untouched in the BTS for six months a year, and then it was closed. I think closed or there was a reply back to me, this is an upstream bug, please report it upstream. And if, if, if yeah, I mean, it, it is. But, you know, people are busy. And if I'd got a, an email back saying, look, I'm terribly busy, I really don't have time to deal with this at the moment, I probably would have gone, you know, I wondered why I bothered to report it to Debian rather than going direct to upstream. Um, yeah, there's two. Do we have another mic? Um, oh, sorry. Uh, sorry. Uh, has there been, I'm sure there has, but some thought into uh, doing some automated upstream reporting or if a tag or a uh, was at attached to a bug by the maintainer uh, that this is an upstream bug, it would just automatically log into the pre-setup Bugzilla account for the KDE team and file the bug 
uh, and then interface the replies back. It's, it's a bit of a problem because there's quite a number of different upstream bug systems, of course, but there are at least a certain set of bugzilla versus different whatever launch pad or whatever. Yeah. Um, Sorry, I'm sure, I'm sure somebody else will reply to that. I just wanted to comment on uh, what you said as well. The, um, uh, with automated replies, the, the experience I've uh, had with them just, just from receiving them and seeing people's reactions to them and so on. Um, the worst case, I think, is to get a response that looks like a robot wrote it. If you get an automate, if you get something that's actually scripted, but that looks like a human wrote it with some attention to how the how the reporter might react and so on, it's that's written as if it were an email to them rather than as if it were an automated response. Then it goes over a lot better. You get these you get these mails that say. Um, that, that basically don't really look like they've read the bug, and I think if the uh, if there if there's some if the if you send an automated response that makes it look as if you've read the bug, <laughs> that has exhibits some kind of human attention, then you can save a lot of you you, you can get the benefits of saving a lot of effort, but without quite so much of the uh, backlash that you tend to get otherwise. Yeah, I mean, when I had envisioned the automated response, I'd assumed that it would be some sort of system where an upstream looked at the bug, or sorry, the maintainer looked at the bug and said, yeah, press the button. And then it would do that. I mean, in, in, yeah, in your mail client or whatever, I mean, you would just have a script that did it. Um, with regards to upstream linking, um, Lars actually and I have done a little bit of discussing, and we're going to hopefully have some time to discuss uh, later on uh, procedure by which we can communicate information from different bug tracking systems like Bugzilla, like Debugs. Um, and this would be specifically of interest as well for distributed bug tracking. Um, so that's still in its infancy, but yeah, but that is sort of something that needs to be fleshed out. Don, have you looked at SD? Hmm, sorry, what? Have you looked at SD? Uh, no. Okay, it's a distributed bug tracking system from uh, bestpractical.com, the, the same folks who brought us SVK. Um, basically, its interesting property is that it has sync and merge algorithms between various bug tracking. For example, you can sync a bug from track to Bugzilla. I, I, I don't remember which set it, it currently supports, but basically plugging in a new bug tracking system um, and moving data between them is, is supported by the framework. Um, there is not currently a DevX plugin, but um, I would at least look at that technology when you're looking at this problem. Awesome, thanks. Uh, let me, since we're already in this stage, this is the discussion uh, phase of the technical part. So, I mean, basically questions that we're hoping to, I was hoping to get answered. So, what are, what is missing from the BTS to make this sort of problem easier? Um, discussion point, what do you spend most of your time doing when uh, dealing with bugs, and what have you guys done that works and what doesn't? So, so we, we, we can keep discussing in this line. That would be. Are there any more comments? Yeah. I'm not one of the people who actually has huge numbers of bugs on their own packages, but. Uh, is possible in the BTS interface to hide the things that are waiting for a reply from, from the submitter? Yeah, so not currently. If you tag them more info, then yeah. Okay. But other, if you don't tag them, it's not, not possible. Um, so yeah, that's actually something that goes back to the action needed uh, list. Um, so it, it is going to be possible to do it in a single mail to tag. I mean, well, it is now. You can just tag it more, more info using a mail to both control and submit. Um, but it is going to be possible to also do any arbitrary control message and any message to submit or bug number at. So in that single message, you could do it all in one shot. Um, but that's not totally complete yet. 
I'm um, sure. Sorry. Go sure. ahead. You weren't finished. Uh, the, well, perhaps this is there already, but the uh, the user tags functionality is uh, very powerful and quite interesting. Uh, although I know quite a few Debian users, not developers, who are have, are completely clueless uh, about this functionality, uh, which is kind of funny because it's called user tags. But uh, <laughs> the uh, right, right, <laughs> exactly. Well. Uh, Something that could be quite interesting is on the bug overview page for a package would be uh, like a user tag cloud or, or some such that where you could see what other things are being added to the, the bug. Perhaps that's there already, even I haven't seen it. Some of that information is available, but there's no, uh, right now there's no option to say, okay, yeah, I want to look at the set of bugs as so-and-so looks at them, uh, right. which sort of, there's some question about whether we want to really enable that totally, but um, it would at least enable people to get ideas for how they can look at it. Because it would be quite interesting to know if, say, my package had a, I don't know, security user tag added to it or something. Um, <clears throat> so w while I was working for Canonical, um, I spent a lot of my time on the kind of packages that I don't really maintain very much of in Debian, which have very large numbers of essentially naive users. And I found that a, a good technique, these automated messages that you talked about earlier, I, I found myself doing that basically ad hoc, and I'd have little little paragraphs that I'd can responses that I'd paste into these bug reports. Um, and nobody actually seemed to mind that very much at all. Uh, and occasionally, obviously a very large number of these bug reports are basically noise. There's, there's very little chance that by interacting, putting more effort into that report, you're actually going to get to a point where it allows you to improve the software, which is, after all, the point. Um, but occasionally, I was able to get, you know, the right information and disentangle the bug from whatever, you know, nightmarish context it was in and, and, and pin it down and actually improve, improve things as a bit, as a result. And that's something that I would commend to maintainers in general, just as an approach. And you, could, you, you don't need any technical support for this. You just need a can email that you can paste in. Uh, hey, hey everyone. I'm the Summer of Code student doing the web UI for Deadbox. I'm Ankai. I'm Diego. Hey. <laughs> uh, well, some comments that I'm trying to uh, test with you in this discussion. Uh, first thing is that one of the motivations for me for doing this project is to try to get more people involved doing triaging because at least in my experience uh, helping GNOME, it's a real it's a real source of new contributors. People start triaging and then uh, slowly get more involved and more involved. And there's actually a team of people only doing triaging. So first thing I would like to ask you all as maintainers is if you will be okay with people that maybe you don't know that well uh, do triaging on your packages. Like answering to users saying uh, we need more information or that version is too old to be supported, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And another thing uh, as a comment is that the automated responses uh, have proved to be somewhat uh, useful in GNOME, at least for some cases. For example, uh, when there's crashes, most people just click on the back body link uh, button that says send report, and it blindly sends a report to the backseller. Most of the time, people never reply to that, or they never give uh, further information. So usually we reply with, uh, we need a better a, a better stack trace to know what what broke, and there's really few people that reply. So most of the crash reports are garbage because we will never know what happened. Uh, if I got it right, uh, the sorry, what's your name? The guy that we oh, the previous comment. Ian. Ian. Uh, okay. If I got it right, you are saying that in Canonical you, ga you have this 
like progressive stock answers? Ah, okay. So there was no, there's no organisational support. It was entirely informal. Mm -hmm. um, I just decided that, given that I had hundreds and thousands of these very similar bugs, that there wasn't anything I could do to them. You know, I couldn't engage with them very much individually because there wouldn't be time. So I wrote a set of stock paragraphs and I kept them lying around in a text file. And after a while, I noticed that occasionally Ubuntu is very full of of, of triagers who sort of don't quite know exactly what they're doing and maybe make the odd mistake. But if you set a good example for them, you, you know, you'd find that they copied your stock answer into some other bug. <laughs> <And> <laughs> sometimes this was, this was bad, but, but on the whole, it was an improvement over what many of them were doing beforehand. Uh, well, uh, I don't know if you could say something about uh, triagers. Yeah, that's actually the second half when we, t I was hoping anyway. So, so yeah, it's definitely something we need to talk about. Okay, well, since we're about halfway through, let's go ahead and switch to the second part. Um, so the social aspect that, or at least what I was calling the social aspect in the terms of this boff, is um, things that we can do to get more people involved. Um, the first thing is slightly better documentation of the BTS. And in, in this terms, I'm thinking more from the casual triager and or casual bug reporter aspect. What can we do to make uh, it's easier to get started doing things that the casual triager or who may become a serious triager started in a way that isn't going to get in the way of maintainers, uh, isn't going to cause a problem, and uh, it gives them enough information to get started at some level. Yeah, sorry. The first thing I'd like to suggest there is uh, an implicit social limitation on people sending out messages that simply say, can you still reproduce this bug in the current release? Right. Uh, I think it would be great if the triagers would be explicit that they are not the maintainer of the package. Yeah, that, that would be useful as well. So, I mean, the main thing also as well as in this is enabling them uh, immediately to figure out where they can do the most good. So what are the packages that are low on manpower where a triager may be the only person who looks at that bug for a long period of time? Um, and the other thing is how to recognize the contributions of triagers and wranglers. Because unlike a package maintainer where you automatically get recognition, your name's on the package, your name's on the web page, your name's everywhere, um, people who work, do this sort of work in the BTS um, sometimes don't get recognized. There's no cachet to it. I mean, there is if you're maintaining that package, you know exactly who it was who was doing all the work, but there's no wider recognition. Um, and so that's something that I kept thinking about and I planned to do last year, didn't get to it, but I want to have a uh, bugs.debian.org employee of the month or something uh, where we keep track or try to keep track of who has fixed the most bugs in a month, who has been most helpful for triaging in the month, either whether it's via voting or something or whether we um, do it via a qu query or something. So. Yeah, people people love getting uh, getting cachet for that sort of thing uh, as, as long as it doesn't turn into a sort of do lots of useless things right. competition, but uh, it but it can be done very well, and I'd agree with that. Um, the the other thing I'd suggest is something that each maintainer can do. I've had good luck in the past, um, mostly mostly in Ubuntu, although I think that's only really because they have more of a bug triage community. Um, I've had some good luck in the past with. Uh, as a maintainer, looking at people who are doing lots of good bug triage, going off talking to them, saying that th that's great. Could you could you have a look at this? Because I think that need that needs work. And uh, with a bit with a bit of effort, you can turn people into co-maintainers if you try hard enough. <laughs> uh, it's it can take its time. People who are doing this kind of thing 
often aren't uh, programmers, but in many cases there are people who are looking for a way to contribute to, uh, to the project and they just haven't quite figured out how yet. If you identify the good ones who are saying, oh yeah, that's, that seems to be a bug in path.h line 213, then um, they're the sort of people who you might be able to turn into a co-maintainer over time. So I, I had one idea. To do, uh, one of the th trouble with triages is that often they go off and do sort of random things that they think are helpful, and there's very little explicit documentation anywhere that explains what kind of triaging activity is useful and what isn't. And so I'm sure we've all been on the receiving end of, of the odd incompetent triager, um, and it, it can be get pretty irritating, um, both as a maintainer and as a submitter. Um, but on the other hand, they, they can do a lot of good if you can get the point in the right way. So one thing that I thought would be useful is if there were a way for a package to publish its kind of triage policy somewhere, um, probably somewhere in the BTS so that it's nearby the, the list of the bugs and everything, and you could just look at it as a web page and it would say, here are some useful things that people do. And then while you're at it, you know, if, if somebody's been doing a great job, you can put their name up there and say, you know, um, if you have any questions about what would be a good triaging activity, the following people really know what's up, and, uh, and that would be a good way of getting people recognition and maybe getting the, the good memes out there and killing the bad ones. Uh, one thing about triaging, uh, sorry if this sounds too non-based, but over there, uh, basically, you don't have immediate uh, bright access because it's Bugzilla, you need uh, permissions. But basically everything goes ar about uh, you approach the bugs channel and say, I would like to help. And someone that is a bug master and has access to give you permission to, to do bright stuff, uh, give you access and follows your activity for let's say one month. And if you start breaking stuff or doing stuff just to fill your status, uh, they politely ask you to fix your behavior or you get uh, removed of the bright group. So uh, the point here will be that there's a social control over bad triaging. If you do, do bad triaging, you get uh, you, you get out of the back squad. Uh, it sounds silly, but it's not cool to be out of the back squad because it actually is seen as a, a cool thing, something that really helps uh, that no one wants to do because it's quite boring to only do QA all day, filling uh, stock answers. And one other thing that might sound a bit uh, questionable is that Baxilla has a point system that uh, depending on how much bugs have you closed, commented, or uh, reported, you get uh, an, a specific number. For example, you can have one point, and after reporting 10 bugs, you can have three points. And it gets harder and harder as long as you go on. But it's not seen as a competition, but more like a recognition of what you are doing. So, so it's sort of like the star system on most forums, I'm assuming, is the... <laughs> right. Yeah, uh-huh. Um, and something, something else about giving recognition to triaggers, maybe we can put in packages.qa Debian, uh, like close in one of the boxes in that page, uh, like, people triaging these packages, this package. Uh, Juan Perez and this other guy, and link to maybe their profile page. So I, have I have one other suggestion that may be controversial. Occasionally you notice you know, you, you, you get some mail from, from the BTS and you look at it and you say, oh dear, 
or maybe something ruder. Um, <laughs> and, 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 and then you, you think to yourself, well, I wonder how many other bug reports have had this same thing done to them. And then you go and you know, do a quick search, and it turns out that one person has done a very similar thing to a great number of bugs. And it would be nice if there were an undo, if there were a way to say, you know, maybe one of the bugs admins would have to do it, or maybe you'd have to be a DD or something and send a signed message. But there were a way of saying, please undo everything that this person did today. And then you could send them an email saying, I'm terribly sorry I had to undo all your work, but actually we really didn't like it. Um, and obviously this would be very discouraging, but uh, there are, of course, you know, I mean, uh, uh, Ubuntu has this, this principle that everybody can make a valuable contribution, but I, I'm not entirely sure that I agree with that. And I think there are some people, you know, there are some people we want to encourage, and the vast majority of people want to be encouraged, but there are some people who are a bit of a, a loose cannon, and somebody who goes off and does a great deal of very similar things without talking to somebody else about it first um, is maybe somebody that we would rather have elsewhere. Yeah, one of the aspects and one of the reasons why I've always sort of been a little bit careful about thinking about introducing a web front end is precisely this reason, because it sort of puts together a barrier to, to contribution that may help uh, enable us to control it. Um, but that said, we always have this case where anybody can send mail, and since now, I mean, there's no problem with a web front end generating an email either. Um, so that's something that, yeah, this ability to recall state may be useful. But that said, I mean, the number of times that we've had problems, uh, for example, the number of people who are excluded for control uh, is fairly small. Uh, I think there's only three or four emails that are people who are not allowed to send email to the control interface right now. Right, right. It's, it's not kind of abuse that I'm, I'm really thinking about here. Okay. It's, it's, it's ignorance. And about once every three months, I, I, I have some of the oldest and dif most difficult bugs in Debian because, well, that's just me, really. Um, and this means that those bugs get very little genuine activity because they're very hard. Um, and occasionally they do get sort of, well, triage activity. And, and obviously I see a, a disproportionately large proportion of bad triage activity because those bugs are essentially already triaged. And, and the effect of this is that, you know, I look at this and then I see that this person has done a similar thing to several dozen bug reports. And it would be nice if I could just undo that and send them a mail explaining why I'd done it. And then, you know, maybe they'll learn from it and maybe they won't. I, I don't think we're at the stage yet where we need to ban people. You know, I think if you would undo everything they've done, they'll, they'll probably take the hit unless they're a really... Would it, would it be enough if you could uh, shove the output from the control bot through a script that would generate the contrapositive or the inverse of that action? Right, but I also need a, 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 an ability to search to identify all of the things that, that match. Usually it's the criteria is this person's from address and the last day or so. Okay. Um, and if I could generate a list of those bugs, um, you know, check up on half a dozen of them to make sure that it wasn't just a fluke and then yeah, I mean, if I could send a, a, you know, a scripted email to control, that would be fine for me. It it might be nice if we so you, so you can extract all of this from the uh, bug log files and dead bugs, but I think Don and I both know it's a complete pain in the arse to do. Um, yeah, I've would actually it be made this easier, so I'll talk about that too. But oh, okay. I was I was about to suggest that we keep something that looks a bit like deepgood.log, which just is a complete log of every control action taken regardless of bug, and that would both allow fairly easy reversal and also give a reasonably convenient way for, well, at least for admins to check... Uh, uh, whether to get a complete list of what everybody had done and maybe to make it easier to expose that in the future. Yeah, Boris has a comment in the back. Um, what I think would be really nice if one could undo that is a reassigning bugs because when you reassign a bug to another package, you lose all the version information on, uh, in the old uh, uh, package and if, if you reassign it back then um, it's hard to restore that information. Oh, okay, yeah. So. What, what I've changed is, just to, since this is coming up, um, in the bug log now, 
since the most recent upload, it tracks what was the original state of the bug and what things it's modified in that control message. So, and it's in HTML comments in the log. So if you're looking at a bug that you've recently modified, you can actually show the whole HTML source. It'll actually show you that bit. Uh, it's, it's just there. Um, and so that'll enable us to roll it back. Um, also now, the control act messages in the reassign, um, well, there's a, they're a little bit too verbose right now, but they'll tell you exactly what actions they've done. So it'll say, oh yes, I've removed this found version, I've added this found version instead, I've caused it to be reopened. Um, so all that is more verbosely repeated. Uh, it's unfortunately a little bit too verbose in that it tells you what bug and package it is multiple times, so I have to fix that. It's, it was designed not to do that, but it's clearly a bug. So. Uh, this is a comment from uh, MRVN on uh, IRC. A triage dug, done slash unwanted tag might help. Okay, there are some way of identifying then like bugs that have clearly been handled by the maintainer. I, I think this is sort of the idea of action needed bugs. So if, if once we got to a state where um, the action, any action required by the maintainer had been done, uh, and the maintainer had indicated it as such, um, then there's no point for additional triage. So people can, yeah. I mean, focus on other bugs instead, and that would yes. sort of clue them in as to that. Yeah. I think that would probably also help with that aspect. A uh, comment from me. Uh, possibly it would be able to say that we do not want triage by our particular user rather than banning the particular user from doing any uh, te uh, modification of bugs as we've had to do in the past. It might be just if he has a particular package or a particular bug that we do not want this user to uh, modify. Okay, yeah, it's currently, would conceivably be possible to code that. I mean, if people think that's a good idea, then uh, we can file wish this bug against the ed bugs and I can look at it. So, I guess, I, I'm wondering if, if we are either micro-optimizing or if the rest of Debian has a different experience than I have, but I am far more worried about trying to convince people to triage my packages than to convince them not to. I'll be happy to deal with um, triage mistakes, but it would be really great if, you know, I could go say, go tell people, please triage my packages, it would be great. You know, please find out if these bugs have been fixed upstream, let me know. Please find out if, if these bugs still re, you know, can be reproduced. Please ask for help if you don't, uh, from the original submitter if you don't understand the bug report, um, more than trying to figure out how to stop it from happening, because that seems to be the status quo. Right, okay. Well, I think, too, along with that, if we can um, put in a set of bugs that have an action required, and that'll automatically select these bugs, and it'll give triagers something that they can look at that they know where to start. They'll know that their contributions will be useful if they start with those bugs. There, there have been, an, sometimes I've had a short period of time when I was able to contribute to Debian, but, but not, haven't had the time to commit to being a package maintainer. And so, um, you know, I, one of the things one can do is fix some bugs. And, and one of the difficult things actually is finding some bugs that the, there's a, an act, a maintainer who's sufficiently active that if you submit a fix, it will actually be implemented rather than sitting untouched for months, months, years on end, because that's very discouraging. Um, and um, I mean, and Andres Till has done s some things with Debian Science, which has made it somewhat easier to pick the subset of packages I'm particularly interested in um, and see the bugs in that. But matching people who've got bugs that require some assistance with people who have some, some level of experience in that particular area. How, how you do it, I don't know, but that would enable many more people to contribute if they've got an afternoon or a weekend free and they're not Debian maintainers without having the full commitment of being a Debian maintainer. Sorry. <laughs> uh, 
Okay, that that the, that actually sounds like tagging. I don't know, uh, but it's a really good idea. Uh, I will say plus one. Uh, and about I wanted to uh, round the idea of the bug squad. Uh, so basically, uh, in GNOME, uh, people is encouraged to screw up because when they do, the we basically just say. Uh, you shouldn't do this because it upsets people, but don't worry, you're learning. Try not to do it again. And if you have any doubt, just ask. Uh, we will tell you what to do or how to proceed. Uh, so it's basically a thing of encouraging people to just try because it's better for us to have people triaging and maybe once in a while screwing up than having no people doing triaging. Okay, we're getting close to the end here, so let me uh, flip up the last slide, uh, and we can continue discussing until we run out of time. But uh, one of the most important things is to take an idea that we've talked about here and, and run with it. So whether that's producing automated or semi-automated responses to messages based on blurbs, okay, as you're maintaining bugs, that's stuff that maintainers can do. And if you come up with a particularly good set of them, um, but let me know about them, and then maybe we'll have a repository somewhere off of bugs. So like resources for maintainers. These are responses that uh, other individuals are using that help. Um, the other thing is don't wait for me. Um, I'm ext my to-do list is in dead bugs, and as you can tell, it's drowning in bugs. So don't wait for me, and don't expect me to solve a particular problem. I accept passages uh, as to all the dead bugs maintainers, so don't, don't wait up for me to, to make it work for everything. So are there any more comments or questions? Um, I'll be talking more about the actual current state of the BTS and some new features that may help with this a little bit that have already been implemented uh, in the state of the BTS talk tomorrow at whatever time it is. I think it's one o'clock or something. Uh, there was someone earlier in the talk who suggested some distributed version tracker, uh, bug tracker based on uh, by the people who did SVK, could you provide an, a URL? It was Sam who mentioned SD. Is that correct? Yeah. SD, SD is really hard to Google for. Oh, with that, uh, thank you. Uh, feel free again to, if you have suggestions, file bugs against dev bugs, uh, or talk to me on IRC and Debian bugs or pound dev bugs, doesn't really matter which. All right, thanks.